Yo, what's up guys? It's Aratislav here and in this video I'm doing another two-day dry fast. I'm gonna be going soft, so that means I'll be taking showers and be able to wash my hands, unlike that other one. Um, yeah, so I just finished dinner. Let's see where I'm at. Looks like 155 pounds. Cool, so starting weight uh, coming in 155. No flex, flex. Um, quick comment on another video I made. Some people were saying I lost 10 kilos. Sorry, the scale I was using before was 10 pounds, not 10 kilos. That'd be crazy in two days. But um, yeah, so usually I lose anywhere from 10 to 12 pounds on something like this. So I'll probably get down to 145 by the end of it. Um, I also get this question a lot, like working out while dry fasting. Footage to show um, some of the workouts I do, the way I do it, and the reason why I do it that way. Obviously, when you're dry fasting, you're dry. You're hard to breathe. Hard to... Yeah, hard to breathe if you're sweating and shit. Uh, so I'll walk you through that. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk safety for a bit. Um, any doctor I've talked to or logical thinking person online would think, okay, we're supposed to die after three days of no water, right? But realistically, that stuff is based on if you're out in the wilderness, in the woods, trying to survive and you don't have access to water, and you're hiking, you're using up resources, you're worried, you're panicking, you're gonna die probably in three days, no water. But if you're just sitting on your ass, doing a few workouts, you're not gonna die in three days of no water. Another thing people bring up is the, the kidney issue. Uh, doctors I've talked to, I've trained, they say your kidneys are gonna shut down because you're not drinking water. And no disrespect, I'm just gonna offer my theory, maybe they're right, I haven't died yet doing this, there's other people that do it. Um, obviously, disclaimer, if you feel like absolute shit and you're going to die, you're going to drink water at that point because there's a difference between fasting and starvation and dying of thirst. And the difference is I have access to water whenever I want versus I don't have access to water and like, oh man, I'm actually going to die. I'm probably going to drink water before I die. Like, let's be real. Um, so let me talk about the kidneys quickly. Kidneys filter the blood. Um, they try and keep the levels of salts and everything in it as, I want to say neutral, but like balanced as possible. And so if you drink a bunch of water, you're going to pee out a bunch really quick because your body doesn't want that much water in your blood. Likewise, if you have a bunch of salts, your body's going to try and control that as quickly as possible. Same thing with insulin, diabetes, and sugar. If you have a bunch of sugar, it goes into your blood, your body's going to try and control that as fast as possible. So what I'm saying is your kidneys probably don't shut down because you're not drinking water. There's still blood filtering through it. I'm still going to the bathroom and peeing. So it's not like they've stopped working just because I'm not drinking water. It doesn't make sense. They're still trying to control everything. My body is burning fat, releasing water and salts and whatever junk is in there. So for some of you, this can be a real shock because if you're overweight and fat, um, your fat, okay, this is the exact same, oh man, great topic here. This is the exact same thing in animals. Fat not only stores energy, but it stores toxins. When there's too much toxicity or your body doesn't know what to do with something, let's say you're eating margarine, which your body has no idea what to do with, it's just plastic, instead of being able to process it because it's overwhelmed, it's gonna put it into fat cells. And it's basically like a buffer, like a water balloon, holding that toxic supplement or whatever this is in this case. So when you burn fat, that's getting released. And you might actually feel like shit because your body is detoxing all that stuff being released from your fat. That brings me to my last point of this, and then let's continue with the video. Um, when you eat animal meat, if you're eating factory farmed, not grass fed, not organic, not good quality meat, the fat of that animal is filled with toxins and trash, and it's just horrible for you. This is, goes beyond macronutrients, micronutrients. This is just fact, if an animal is eating sawdust and concrete pieces and even other bits of animal that it's not supposed to be eating or a shitty vegetarian diet or pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, that stuff gets trapped in its fats. And then, you know, you're eating a nice marbled steak that's grain fed from a factory. You're getting all that shit put into your fat cells now. 
All right, so uh, a little tang tangent side. Let's keep going with the video. Okay, so we got to my first workout. This is about 14 hours in, no food, no water. Um, working on my strength, trying to get a one-arm chin-up. Um, basically here I'm just doing three sets of three archer pull-ups off the rings. They're not that pretty yet, but I'm working to get them up there. And today I'm doing more of a circuit. Tomorrow I'm doing just a, a series. So in the circuit, I'm doing the archer chin-ups first. Then I got pistols, planche push-ups, and repeat three times. So I got a push, a pull with a leg. So here I'm just alternating from side to side on my pistols. Don't really have access to the gym right now, so body weight will have to do. And I'm not rushing through these. I'm not getting a huge sweat going. I'm not breathing heavy. I'm focusing on strength. So strength is lower reps, higher intensity, um, taking big breaks between each set. And like I said, today I'm doing this in a circuit. So I'm doing one exercise after the other. And here I'm doing some forward leaning planche push-ups. So I'm basically trying to go as far forward as I can on the, on the descent to the point where I'm pretty much gonna hit my face. And then I back off a little bit so I can push out of it. With the goal of one day being able to do push-ups without the feet on the floor. That was all I got to say about that one. So I did three rounds of these, and then I finished with three rounds of hanging leg raises, doing my best to keep my legs straight, but as I get tired, you know, getting the toes up there to the rings gets a little harder to keep the legs straight. But so I do three sets of 10 on these toe to bars, toe to rings, leg raises, whatever you want to call it. And then thrown in there, so if you're doing core, you got to do posture. You're going to see me doing three minutes worth of a Superman where I'm laying on my chest, and man, you really feel the shoulders if you hold the position I'm holding. But I'm just trying to hold a nice tall alignment here, uh, as you'll see right now. So it's three minutes worth, sped up into about 10 seconds. So we're working on the posture, working on the rear delts, and I did two sets of these. All right, I am almost 24 hours into this dry fast. I've actually not showered, so I guess we're going hard dry fast. I've got the scale ready and the numbers are looking pretty crazy for now. Um, yeah, I guess I lost a lot of water, so let's step on. One forty-seven and a half. Yesterday I was, let's do the math, 155, 147. Seven and a half pounds? in 24 hours, so I guess I was holding a lot of water. Um, big movement in the morning, so this is 24 hours. We're gonna do one more workout tomorrow and then weigh in at the 48 hour dry fast cycle and see what I'm down to, so see you soon. Wow, so in that footage you just saw, you can see I definitely lost a lot of water. Uh, my chest is extremely flat, I'm looking tiny. Uh, compared to yesterday. So what's realistically happening during something like this is I'm not losing seven and a half pounds of fat. Some of it's fat, but probably nowhere near seven and a half. Um, when you take carbs out of your system, and I've been having a lot more carbs than I usually have uh, this past few weeks. So when you take carbs out of your system, you drastically reduce your body's ability to hold on to water. One gram of carbs will hold approximately three grams of water. So if you're taking 500 grams of carbs, that's three times 1,500 grams of water. That's about three, three and a half pounds at least. Um, so that's like if you're gone one day, just not eating as much carbs as you usually do. And then let's take into the account that I've not eaten any food, not drinking any water, and I've kind of, I guess, carb loaded because I've been having more carbs. Um, it does make sense that I've lost so much weight so quickly. Um, I am also very lean. So I imagine if you're a very heavy person or have a lot more uh, weight and water on me, you should be able to lose more than I am in this time period. So good luck out to you if you are trying this stuff. All right, it's the morning, 36 hours in. I just got out of bed. A little bit of advice for those of you trying this dry fasting stuff. 
whenever you wake up in the morning, your mouth is probably going to be dry, especially on like day two or more. Don't give up at that point. That's just from breathing and all that at night. Give yourself five minutes. Try and get some spit in your mouth to coat your tongue, coat your cheeks, everything. Because you're going to wake up thinking, oh my God, I'm in a desert and completely dry. But uh, push through for five, ten minutes and things will get better. You'll be fine. Uh, I'm going to say avoid talking too much because that also uses up that mouth fluid. It doesn't feel too good. Um, Got one more workout today, and then uh, we'll weigh in tonight. See how she goes. Wow, I just did that weighted chin up with 40 pounds strapped on. And I've never done seven reps in a row before. I've been training the past couple weeks. I've been barely getting six. Um, I don't know if it's the adrenaline, the cortisol, the extra bush, push. Um, definitely could be the fact that I'm down close to 10 pounds. Um, well, strength is still there about 37 hours into this dry fast, no food, no water, hard dry fast, no showers, no touching water. Um, this is good. So when you are doing dry fast and depending on your experience level, depending on the purpose, depending on the days, I made a video about this before on exercising while dry fasting. Um, I'm taking five minute breaks and training for strength. You know, my goals are like handstand push-ups, single arm pull-ups, um, I'm not doing a CrossFit crazy workout where I'm trying to sweat and raise my heart rate. Because if you do that, your throat is going to get really dry and it's going to really suck. Um, yeah, so you can work out. I mean, I'm sure you could do those. But again, if your goal is to, you know, fight some sort of disease in your body or do some serious healing and you want to do three, four, five days dry fasting, working out is probably not the best because it's going to deplete you much faster. It's going to make it a lot harder to go that distance. And... When you're dry fasting, you're doing fasting for healing purposes. Obviously, the longer you go, the more you're getting out of it. Because the first 24 hours, not much is happening. But then the 25th, 26th, 30th, 36th, 40th, 48th, every hour, your body's just ramped up, high revving on the healing factors. Autophagy, you know, breaking down fat, just all the stuff that your body needs to do to heal. It happens in the later phases and the deeper you go into the dry fast, the better. So what I'm doing with these workouts, I'm only doing two days dry. Um, it's not a big deal and that's strength focused. So I'm doing four to seven reps, uh, taking five minute breaks between. It's not a circuit style. So um, getting ready to hit up my next set on the chins. So keep that in mind when you're exercising dry fasting. All right, easy setup here. Just put some weights on your bed. Make sure you have a towel or something soft for your knees, a towel to protect you from the ridge of your bed. And you got a great hamstring exercise. Here we are, 48 hours into a dry fast, uh, no showers. This is how I currently look. Let's see if we can get that angle in. I think I'm a lot leaner than I was when I started. I'm approximately 10 pounds down from what I started, so let's see where I'm at. Forty-four and a little bit. So we started at one fifty-five. 
about 11 pounds lost there. And I thought about it, I think I'll throw in an extra 12 hours, push myself to do two and a half days dry fasted. I feel okay enough to do it. So see what happens when I wake up tomorrow morning. I've got a class online and then I'm gonna drink and we'll see what the final loss is overnight. I am so hyped. This is done. 60 hours, dry fasting, no food, no water, no showers. I have been washing my hands considering the corona thing. I don't want to spread stuff, so sue me. I wash my hands. Call it a hard dry fast if you want or not. Um, yeah, 60 hours, no food, no water. For the most part, this is the best I've actually felt doing a dry fast. Um, haven't been really doing anything. So those exercisings and then mostly it's just sitting and doing schoolwork. Let's get to the weigh-in. Two and a half days ago, 60 hours, I was weighing 155. So here we go. Sick. 143 and I definitely look it. I uh, lost 12 pounds, give or take 0.1 in two and a half days, so I'm definitely water depleted. Uh, let's see what happens when I try and put it back on. I hope you guys enjoyed this, hope it inspires you. Uh, the real reason I'm doing this is not to lose weight or anything, it's for health reasons. The dry fasting helps my stomach, help everything feel so much better afterwards. Um, if the workouts are anything to say, both workouts were fantastic. I was, the second one was great, I set some PRs. I mean, realistically, I'm a little lighter, so stuff like the chin-ups and the weighted vest uh, felt insanely easy. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I do have other videos on fasting, so if you're curious about how to start, how to stop, exercising during fasting, headaches, whatever, just check out my channel for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.